Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White, and today's lesson is a continuation, continuation of our lesson on chemical equilibrium. Today we're going to talk about the temperature dependence of the free energy change for chemical reactions, and we'll talk about the temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant, and finally we'll deal with something called Le Chatelier's principle, which has to do with the response of a system that's disturbed from equilibrium. So first let's look at the temperature dependence of G, the Gibbs free energy. We know that delta G for any chemical reaction is equal to delta H minus T delta S, and this is a temp a, this is an equation which is linear in temperature. We know that uh, the delta H, the standard uh, change in enthalpy for a chemical reaction, is not strongly dependent on temperature. We'll consider it to be a constant. And likewise, delta S is not strongly dependent on temperature. So almost all of the temperature dependence of G is in the linear, in the linear term T delta S. And therefore, we can express the temperature dependence of delta G by taking the derivative of this equation with respect to temperature. And that gives us minus delta S as the coefficient. So if we make a plot, just schematically, of delta G for a chemical reaction as a function of temperature, this will be a straight line with an intercept of delta H and a slope of minus delta S. So this could be positive or negative, and the intercept could be positive or negative, but to a good approximation, it's a linear function. Now, when we look at the temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant, we have a slightly more complicated system. First of all, the definition of the equilibrium constant is e to the minus delta g over rt. And so if we take the logarithm of both sides, we find that log k is equal to minus delta g over rt. If we then want to look at the temperature dependence, we can't do this in a simple linear way, but if we take the derivative of log k with respect to inverse temperature, we get almost the same thing. And so that would be the derivative of minus delta G over RT with respect to inverse temperature. And if we plug, our, plug in the definition of delta G in terms of delta H minus T delta S, we get uh, a term which then finally allows us to take the derivative with respect to temperature, again treating delta H for the reaction and delta S for the reaction as being nearly independent of temperature. And finally we get that that result is minus delta H for reaction divided by R are the gas constant. So the thing to notice here is that even though the temperature dependence of K is highly nonlinear, it involves only uh, the delta H of reaction and not the delta S of reaction. So temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant depends only on whether the reaction is endothermic or endo or exothermic and by how much and does not depend to a good approximation on the change in entropy. So to uh, recap this, so, uh, if we have an endothermic reaction, delta H for reaction is greater than zero, then the equilibrium constant increases with temperature and heating favors the product formation. An easy way to think of this is to think of heat as a pseudo-reactant. So if for an endothermic reaction, reactants plus heat goes to products, and so you're adding a reactant and forcing the reaction to go farther to the right as written. It's exactly the opposite for an exothermic reaction. If you have delta H minus, uh, if, if delta H for the reaction is less than zero, then the equilibrium constant decreases with increasing temperature, and heating will actually shift the reaction uh, back toward the reactants. It actually shifts the equilibrium point back farther toward reactants. Again, you can think of this qualitatively as reactants going to products plus heat. So if you're raising the temperature, you're essentially adding heat, which is a pseudo product of this reaction, and you'll force the the equilibrium position to go back toward reactants. You actually do that by changing the value of, of the equilibrium constant, and in fact you decrease the value of K when you increase temperature for an exothermic reaction. So this leads us to a more general consideration of a principle called Le Chatelier's principle, and that is when a system initially at equilibrium is disturbed in some way, the system will respond in a way that minimizes the effect of the disturbance disturbance. So if we have a system which is initially at equilibrium and we add reactants, then what that does is because the um, uh, 
reaction quotient Q is the concentration of products divided by reactants. If we're adding reactants, then we reduce Q below the level of K, and the reaction will proceed in the forward direction in order to increase Q until it once again equals K. If we add products, exactly the opposite happens. Q goes up. Uh, so that its magnitude is above or greater than K, and the reaction will proceed in the reverse direction in order to bring Q down to equal K again. If we reduce the volume of a system, what that does is increases the pressure of all the gases, and now the reaction will respond in a way that depends on the number of moles of gas on each side. If we take, for example, the decomposition of N2O4 to two moles of NO2, then there are two moles of products and only one mole of reactants. If we reduce the volume of such a system, it increases the pressure, partial pressure of all the gases, but since the numerator is squared in this case and the denominator is linear, that will force Q to be greater than K and the reaction will proceed back toward reactants. Another way of thinking about this is if you reduce the volume, you kind of squeeze the system and the system can relieve that pressure by going backwards toward N2O4. This is a simple result of um, Q being in, in uh, out of balance with the equilibrium constant and the system's response to make the reaction go toward the equilibrium constant. If you had a reverse situation where you had more uh, reactant moles of gas than product moles of gas, then just the opposite would occur. If you have liquids and solids, they are generally considered to be incompressible, and so it would have no effect on the equilibrium point. Uh, finally, if you raise the temperature, then we've already seen that an endothermic reaction will proceed in the forward direction, but now instead of uh, reduce in instead of resolving the balance between Q and K, it actually increases the equilibrium constant, leaving Q the same. And so now um, the uh, reaction would be uh, going forward in inch in order to increase Q to become equal to the new uh, value of K. For an exothermic reaction, it would just be the opposite. So next time, we will talk about the equilibrium of phase transitions, uh, for example, melting of ice into liquid water or boiling of water to water vapor. And we will consider changes in the enthalpy, entropy, and Gibbs free energy for melting, vaporization, and sublimation.